Good morning and welcome to Stu Dornan, Legislative Candidate from District 20. Thank you, Stu, for joining us for our virtual Legislative Candidate meetings. My name is Gina Ragland and joining me today are AARP Lead Advocacy Volunteers, Joyce Beck, Danny DeLong, Tim Potter, and Janet Davis. As a reminder, this meeting is being recorded and will be shared with ARP members across your district prior to the election. Stu, we appreciate your taking the next 30 minutes of your time to meet and discuss issues of importance to the 50 plus voter and their families in your district and across Nebraska. As a little bit of background, ARP is the nation's largest nonprofit nonpartisan organization dedicated to empowering and strengthening people 50 and older to choose how they live as they age. As people live longer, healthier lives, we know we need to think differently about what it means to age. So with that, Stu, if you wanted to start us off by giving us a little background about yourself and your campaign, generally five minutes or less is our goal there, that would be great. And then once we've completed your opening, we'll move into the questions. So welcome, Stu. Yeah, and thank you for having me. Uh, my wife and I have been married for 38 years. Um, we have nine children. Uh, all of them are out of the house. Uh, and we love them just as much out of the house and maybe even a little more. Um, so we've been, we've been blessed with um, a large family and it's been uh, probably the most rewarding experience of, of our lives. Professionally, um, you know, I'm a lawyer uh, out of law school. I was a special agent with the FBI. Uh, following that, I was probably the only FBI agent to become a public defender after that because I wanted to become a trial lawyer and that's where you get the most trial experience. So uh, I was a public uh, defender for a while and then I went into private practice, um, became a, a, a partner in a law firm here, worked there for 13 years. And then I was fortunate enough to be appointed as a Douglas County attorney. Uh, and the Douglas County attorney is the chief law enforcement officer uh, in uh, the county. I've also served on many boards, um, including Community Alliance, which is a, uh, a mental health and behavioral health uh, entity, uh, Lutheran Family Services, Ronald McDonald House, been active with the uh, Vestry in our church. Um, so I really enjoy public service uh, and, and have done uh, a lot of that over the years. Um, furthermore, I was on the uh, West Side School Board um, and currently I'm on the um, uh, Educational Service Unit 3 uh, board. So I've been involved in public education uh, for almost 15 years now in a, in a public service role. Um, most of my career, um, I've been a criminal defense attorney, founded a law firm here um, in 2007. Um, we've grown where we now have 14 attorneys and uh, about 30 uh, uh, folks working here. And our goal is to provide exhaustive service to our clients, uh, a number of whom are elderly. Um, so I was fortunate to be able to uh, grow up in a household um, where uh, I live with my grandparents. So I had firsthand experiences of the challenges they faced as they aged. Um, with respect to the legislative run, focusing on four things, uh, reducing property taxes by getting more state aid to our schools, strong public safety, uh, really strengthening our mental health services for everyone, particularly uh, our, our, our students in the school, and um, uh, just um, uh, basically doing everything I can to contribute to the greater good. Perfect. Thank you, Stu, for sharing your background, your bio. We love to hear about your family, but most importantly, thank you for your public service. I appreciate your, your track record there. That's, that's quite impressive. Uh, we're going to now move into the question portion, and we provided you ahead of time with a set of three issues containing four questions pertaining to the 50 plus in Nebraska. Again, due to our time constraints, we're allotting about five minutes for each question. Our first question this morning is on health, caregiving, and home and community-based services, and Joyce Beck is going to take that. So go ahead, Joyce. Do thank you for your time um, this morning. I appreciate it. Home and community-based services, also known as HCBC, 
HCBS, excuse me, provides an array of services designed to assist individuals with it, activities of daily living that promotes independence to support them to age in place or to delay institutional care. A family caregiver is a family member, friend, or acquaintance who cares for another person that is unable to live independently, and oftentimes they do this without pay. Telehealth services can be significant for older adults in rural areas or underserved communities, while also providing support to the family caregivers by reducing travel, wait time, and cost associated with in-person care. So, Stu, I have two questions for you. The first one is, what will you do to support the 240,000 unpaid family caregivers in Nebraska through policies such as enhanced respite services, access to telehealth, caregiving education and training, and help with out-of-pocket expenses? And the other question is, what will you do to protect and or expand home and community-based services programs, particularly recruitment and retention of significant workforce and adequate funding of the services that Nebraskans and their families rely on? Well, let me start out uh, with what, what you folks all know uh, with respect to our elderly. Uh, Oftentimes they're poor, oftentimes they have great needs, uh, and oftentimes they are friendless if they don't have family support. Um, and we need to focus on just the old golden rule of, of loving our neighbors as ourselves. And one of the ways that we can do that, uh, let me start out with the internet and telehealth care. We have to extensively uh, improve our broadband services in Nebraska. Uh, that's, that's absolutely crucial in, in so many ways. Uh, we've been fortunate uh, to get some uh, uh, aid here promised to us. Uh, and I think that um, uh, was, and I think in, you know, one of the things with respect to the pandemic, I think it uh, at least started the uh, programming of, of more telehealth services. You know, the necessity is the mother of invention. And I think that, uh, uh, was a, a very important thing. With respect to um, caregivers, uh, you know, we have a, a real workforce um, problem here. Um, and I think that one of the things that, that we can do uh, with respect to certifying uh, folks uh, to care for our elderly would be to uh, provide grants, um, uh, usually uh, uh, CNAs, uh, are, are able to get a certification or at least schooling to, to qualify for certification through our community, uh, our community colleges. And uh, if we were able to tap on the shoulder uh, a number of young people uh, who have an interest in doing this and saying, hey, um, you know, if you go into this field, we're going to provide grants, we're going to provide uh, potential debt relief. Um, and, and, and that will hopefully uh, encourage people to, to want to do that. Um, I think we need to increase our workforce visas uh, with respect to uh, the issue of, of providing additional care. Um, you know, I, I think the, uh, the bottom line is that we respect everything that our, our uh, elders have done uh, in order to put us in the place that we're in. Uh, and, uh, and basically, uh, hopefully recruit people who have a heart of ministry for this. I mean, it, is a, it is a special sort of care, which requires a lot of patience, requires a lot of empathy, uh, compassion. Uh, and we need to do everything we can to uh, facilitate um, the best possible quality of life for folks who uh, are starting to have limitations. Uh, so all those things are, are extremely important. Thank you so much, Stu, for your answer. 
Thank you, Stu. And we do appreciate your understanding about caregivers and the and the thankless jobs. Oftentimes those home health and, and those sort of people are, it is a thankless job sometimes. So we do appreciate your thoughts and comments on that. Our second question now is on nursing facility quality. And Danny DeLong is gonna take that one. Go ahead, Danny. Good morning, Stu. Um, first, I wanna just uh, thank you for your contribution to Omaha Westside. Uh, when I heard that, that you were on the school board or had been at least, uh, I thought back to my student teaching experience uh, when I was going to school at Kearney State College. I student taught at Omaha Westside and, and loved the experience of it. And uh, uh, so I, I know this, I knew the school at that time and knew the neighborhood. And anyway, I just wanted to make that connection with you. So uh, good place to be. All right, let's start up. So. Um, I'm going to talk about nursing facility quality, and there are over 20,000 Nebraskans who require care in nursing facilities or assisted living communities. Facilities have closed their doors, citing reimbursement challenges and staffing challenges. Nebraska will need an additional 4,700 more nursing assistants, LPNs, and RNs by 2028 to meet Nebraskans' care needs. Everyone, regardless of where they reside, deserves to be treated with dignity and respect and to have access to quality medical care. We know that better staff to resident ratios improve the overall quality of care and well-being of residents. Workforce recruitment, re workforce recruitment, workforce retention, and job satisfaction challenges are prevalent across the long-term services and support industry. Causes of workforce challenges must be identified and implemented to respond to the growing need for high quality care. My question for you, sir, is what will you do to improve the quality of nursing facility care for Nebraska residents, including addressing the growing long-term care workforce crisis in the state, professional education and training, and accountable facility reimbursement. Well, it, it, as all of you know, um, with respect to uh, the Beatrice uh, facility uh, was an example where uh, the state failed miserably uh, in providing for uh, uh, the human condition. Um, we need to get away uh, from the debacle that we had with uh, uh, St. Francis with respect to our children and learn from that with respect to uh, our elder population. And again, I, I think that um, we need to do whatever we can uh, to grow our own. Um, Danny, you, know, you talked about um, uh, West Side and, and the need for um, uh, teachers uh, there. Uh, again, the same thing uh, is uh, in regard to, as I mentioned before, uh, certification of, of high quality uh, individuals. Uh, we have to uh, understand the human condition with respect to providing services is different than uh, providing services for our infrastructure. You know, you may be able to take uh, a lower bid with respect to uh, infrastructure, but you 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 have to uh, take the the absolute uh, best um, uh, and brightest, and you have to pay them uh, because uh, you're talking about respecting uh, and honoring human life, uh, respecting the dignity of every human being, and um, again, I think apprenticeship programs and internship programs, uh, starting out early, maybe even uh, in, in high school, uh, uh, with respect to having uh, young people work under the, uh, the tutelage of a, uh, what, what I'll call a, a master uh, a nurse, CNA, uh, and giving them real life experience as soon as possible. And if they, if they have a, uh, a calling for that, uh, at a young age, uh, they can get that experience, but, but we have to pay them a living wage. Um, we, we absolutely have to. Uh, you know, we all do well when everybody does well. 
And that goes from our young people to our, our elderly folks. Uh, and we really need to uh, have a very caring attitude, uh, again, uh, uh, treating them uh, as we would like to be treated. So, um, you know, we don't talk about posterity anymore, um, you know, and what we're doing to uh, try to leave a, a better place for our children. But we also don't talk about how good of a place our, our elders have left us through all their sacrifices over the years. Um, so um, we need to pay uh, particular attention to, to that as, as much as any other uh, uh, societal issue. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dornan. I appreciate uh, the detailed response that you've given me. Thank you much. Thank you, Stu. Our final question for discussion today centers around livable communities and helping people stay in their home. And Tim Potter is gonna take that. So go ahead, Tim. Okay, thanks, Gina. And uh, thank you, Stu, for participating in this with us today. Um, a livable community is uh, safe and secure, offers affordable housing and transportation options that allow individuals to travel by multiple means and provide supportive community features and services for people of all ages, allowing people to remain in their communities as they age. Affordable and reliable health care and transit options are critical to support older Nebraskans aging in place. High-speed internet should be affordable, reliable, and accessible for all Nebraskans. Digital skills development is also essential to obtaining the benefits of high-speed internet access in the home. So my question for you is, what will you do to ensure all Nebraskans, mainly those 50 plus, have access to livable communities which offer affordable housing, diverse transportation options, adequate health care, and affordable, reliable, and accessible high-speed internet, including digital skills development. You know, I've done a lot of door-to-door -door here over the, the last year, and I have visited uh, many folks who in their home are living on a fixed income. And with respect to uh, property taxes, property taxes skyrocketing, uh, uh, they have, uh, many have said to me, we don't know if we can afford to continue to uh, live in our home on a fixed income. Uh, we're going to have to to move and, you know, we may have to move out of state and, you know, we, we don't want to reduce our population uh, with respect to uh, being a, a community that welcomes everybody. So I think that um, reducing property taxes uh, is, is very important. Um, I think that we can take a look at getting uh, more state aid to our schools in order to take the burden off the backs of our, of our homeowners, uh, particularly those who are, who are struggling uh, to maintain living in a house they may have lived in all their lives. Um, it's, a, uh, it's an existential threat. And uh, we need to be very cognizant of if folks are not able to stay in their home to have affordable housing available. Um, and affordable housing, again, that uh, uh, provides for uh, nursing uh, and, um, and other care uh, for folks who, again, are maybe limited as far as getting out uh, to be able to go uh, to see a physician. So uh, drawing back on the necessity for broadband uh, is absolutely crucial. Uh, telehealth. You know, I, I was disappointed to, to see that there was a movement of, among some of the insurance companies to uh, provide less uh, reimbursement for telehealth. Um, you know, uh, if you can't get to the doctor and that's your only, uh, uh, is, that's, that's the only thing that is available to you, you have to uh, have access to it and you have to know how to have access to it. Uh, and, and obviously with respect to um, training, um, you know, I, I think that uh, we should do everything possible to provide the opportunity for our elderly population to, to learn how to navigate the internet and, and, and the websites. Uh, I mean, that's not, that's not going away and we're gonna have, we're gonna become more and more reliant on it. Um, that transportation, that, that's, a, that's a tough issue 
Um, you know, we, we need to uh, do everything we can, and, and whether it's through our churches, our nonprofits, um, uh, our, our, uh, our government uh, support, we need to make sure that uh, if somebody uh, has a chronic condition and they physically need to get in front of a doctor, we need to figure out a way to get them there and to provide the, uh, the services that would enable them to do that. Um, again, um, you know, we, we have to take really good care of, of folks who are in uh, often vulnerable situations due to, due to their health issues. Okay, well, thank you for your response. You're welcome. Thank you, Stu. We appreciate that. Um, as we're coming now to the end of our meeting, I would like to offer to you the final minutes to provide any closing thoughts or comments you might have for our members and, of course, the constituents of your district. So we have about five minutes left. The floor is back to you. If you have any closing comments, go ahead. Sure. You know, if, if I'm fortunate enough to be um, elected to the legislature, I, I look at that body as a, a body of a, a board of directors with respect to um, doing uh, what's in the best interest and the greater good for our state. And that requires being able to, um, uh, again, look at uh, every aspect of the human condition. Um, you know, I've been I've been fortunate to, um, uh, as a, a criminal defense attorney, uh, had many elderly clients um, who um, faced um, serious uh, legal uh, issues. And we need to ensure that um, we, we, don't, um, we don't pay any less attention to folks who are in that stage of life. Um, and uh, again, with respect to the property tax issue, I think that's very important. I'm an extremely strong uh, supporter of uh, mental health services. Oftentimes with respect to uh, early onset dementia uh, or uh, just uh, uh, cognitive uh, functioning, we have got to be able to um, uh, support those individuals in, a, uh, in the most humanitarian way. Uh, and that requires all of us uh, to be mindful of that uh, and, and to respect the dignity of every human being. Uh, so that, that requires um, the government uh, to be a part of that. Um, you know, uh, nonprofits and, and volunteers and churches and private, and, and private uh, agencies uh, just are not enough to do that. Uh, and so we need to have legislation uh, that addresses that um, and, and to make sure that we're not leaving uh, anybody out. Uh, and again, uh, the least of us, uh, we should be paying attention to those who have um, uh, disabilities, challenges, uh, and, and making sure that we, we meet those challenges. That's hard work. Um, and uh, it's got to be a, uh, both a, a, a private sector and a, and a government partnership. I'm a firm believer of, of uh, private-public uh, partnerships because I think that it's the responsibility of, uh, of, of both uh, the government and, and also of, um, of loving and caring for our neighbors. Uh, we need to come together to do that uh, and, and uh, get away from some of the wedge issues so that we can uh, focus on the human condition of, of all aspects of life. Thank you again, Stu, for taking the time to visit with us. We appreciate so much your thoughts and comments today and, and definitely where you stand on the different issues. And I do personally wanna thank you for recognizing the importance and the value of our older population. Um, we wish you the best with your campaign and thank you again for meeting with ARP today. Take care. Thank you for the invitation and um, uh, I wish all of you, you well, uh, appreciate the service that you are doing right now, um, and um, I'm thankful for it. Thank you, Stu. Okay. Thank you, Stu. Thank you, Stu. Bye. Right, Bye. Thank Take you. Take good care.